It is time to start our adventure. This is Tales of Soarfall. And we're going to flip over to uh, the other group that has all the ladies in Taz's apartment. Uh, so, uh, you're all in the apartment. You have Barb and the two other women who have not been named in Falalalol. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you're serving them tea. Uh, what else do you do for them? Uh, feeding them, serving them, kind of just like tending to them, making sure they're okay, because they're obviously really shaken by the experience they just went through. And despite Krakatur's usual bombastic and almost ridiculous demeanor, he's actually like calm and like trying his best to, you know, talk to them and calm, keep, make sure they're calm and okay. Are any of them obviously hurt? Um,. Yeah, like the uh, Earth Genasi lady uh, that, even though you keep asking her name, she keeps making like weird rumbling noises. Uh, do you translate for uh, Dim Krakater? Yes, I do. Despite her weird accent being Earth Genasi, um, you kind of get the under understanding that her name is the equivalent of Hidden Diamond. Okay. Uh, her name is Hidden Diamond, at least in our tongue. That's pretty. Hi. Does anyone speak Elven in this group? Um, am I? I don't. Sorry, I'm low-key losing my voice. Oh no. Um, if someone wants to write it, I can read it. Unfortunately, I don't. That's my other character. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so she keeps talking in Elven like she doesn't know anything in common, and uh, she's just massively confused and scared. She's probably the most scared out of all of them. Tabby gives her a pad of paper and a, and a quill and says, "Here, go ahead and write down what you're thinking. I can read what you what you uh, what you are saying." And she doesn't quite understand what you are saying, but uh, she looks at the pad and starts writing furiously. And uh, Tab yeah, Tabby actually yells that, and she's like, "Quill, paper, talk!" Points to voice. <laughs> or you doing the uh, "I'm a tourist, and I, if I talk louder, you'll understand faster" type exactly. way. Exactly. Nice. I. Uh, she doesn't take your words really threatening because you are like doing it in a more commanding I'm here, do something for me voice. And uh, you see her start like uh, just feverishly writing uh, things that um, she's from uh, Dinners, uh, that she is from the house of the fallen star uh she uh like has been here for three weeks her name her name well in elven it translates to uh river frog but you know, it's kind of weird <laughs> river frog so her name is River Frog, but my Elvish could be wrong. <laughs> it sounds like a silly name. Mm, perhaps it is River Toad. That is much better. What about River I Lizard? I, I like River, River Flea. She's named after Ooh. our yeah. Lord and Savior. <laughs> ah, yeah. Or we could just call her her name. We could call her River. For short. I do like that. I like... Yes, I like, I like that. Okay, I want to try and patch patch up some wounds, just keep them clean and dressed and stuff. Yeah, medicine checks. 
Uh, Cracketer is going to try and make sure the food is delicious for them. Having, you know, they probably haven't been eating good. He wants to make sure they're eating good because yeah. in his, his language is, if you're eating good, you're happy. All right, uh, give me a survival check then. Can I use my cooking utensils proficiency? Uh, yes, you can use your uh, cooking utensil proficiency. I got a 16. Nice. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. 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 What are you trying to do? Oh my God. Poison these guys? So, oh. Krakatur, <laughs> what no. what goes absolutely wrong as you're cooking? Um, he totally he's trying to use the the uh, pepper thing, and the lid comes off, and all the pepper just sprays right into the pan. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Once once invited to the party, the pepper can never leave. As the top of the uh, pepper thing goes off, it accidentally bangs a bottle of oil, and it starts going <laughs> onto the stove, which starts lighting things up. Well, yeah, it suddenly like combusts because it's hot oil on a surface, and it goes past the uh, smoking port into fire. And, oh no! Oh uh, no! Taz, your uh, kitchen is going. Well, going up in flames, just a little, but it's it's happening. I uh, grab a blanket and start trying to smother the fire. I oh. run up with druid craft, and I'm gonna try to put out the fire. Okay, as well, cool. Oh, oh my goodness! Can can you use an intelligence check on this? Uh, yes, or you can use the survival, uh, because you know fire and all that stuff. Oil, water, fire. <laughs> it's yeah. a good, great combination. <laughs> I mean, uh, he said he's using his powers to put out the... Yeah, I'm just gonna yeah. put it out. Cause I can okay, you're not using, there. like, your, like, ooh, I'm gonna put snow on top of it, or <laughs> water, I'm gonna make it no. rain! <laughs> no, I can, I can snuff out a small flame, so I'm gonna do the small okay. flames around the big one, I guess. Yeah, with the effort of Taz and Flea, you guys successfully put out the small kitchen fire. Congratulations, oh. you're not Sims. <laughs> oh no! Success! Success. Now you have to talk like them. Sim Simonies. Rest the oh. session. You didn't see that. Krakatur is really embarrassed. <laughs> Barb Taz just gives him a nasty look. Barb comes into the kitchen and looks around. Do you need a hand? I uh, I usually am pretty good at this. I was I was raised by a cook, but. For now, I could use a hand. Krakatoa, you just made them ta-ta, that's all. I mean, it's still good, you know, just cut into the middle. Uh, yes, water genasi like the food, salty. Yes. Peppery. Uh, <laughs> yes, peppery. <laughs> so, uh, give me a deception check, just quickly oh. here. Oh my god! <laughs> Your rolls tonight are perfect, man. <laughs> man. Good thing we're not pulling this plan off. Yeah, Barb just kind of... She nods, pats you on the shoulder, and uh, Taz, you see this woman start going through all your cupboards, and she's taking out just spices from the back that you, like, probably bought because of, like, maybe a one-time cooking project, or, like, someone was convinced you to buy these spices, and uh, she just starts taking them and, uh, you know, using a mortar and pestle to start, like, cooking, and she like starts um putting everything together and as soon as she like starts smashing it it smells really good uh let's see how good because i could totally botch this roll too it smells a little weird it smells very foreign but it doesn't All right, no everyone out of my kitchen everyone out out of my kitchen what, what are you gonna make us <laughs> i have something i brought at the market i can't remember what <laughs> Uh, it's fish. It, it's okay. I know you have jars of sardines. I'm just gonna grab one for myself. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm could. not really hungry. <laughs> I just snatch a jar and then just like start to paw into it. Take it. Take a sardine out with my claw and eat it. Yeah, Taz, you know your own kitchen. Give me a survival check with uh, advantage. Uh, if you have anything that will help in this, go ahead and use that. Any kind of tools or advantage or anything. I don't think so. I'll okay. Just... Survival? 
Uh, yeah, with advantage. Fifteen. Fifteen? Yeah, you know how to salvage this meal. I mean, a cracketer didn't mess it too much up much and the spices like once you add a little bit more to whatever barb did it's it's it smells way better and i it, maybe she didn't quite finish it or maybe she had too much of a one spice but whatever she did it it turns out okay like it turns i mean for for all the women who have been trapped in the upstairs that upstairs for like you know however long it's really good Everybody eats, and everyone, like, gets their fill. But you're totally out of food again. I feel like I just bought food. While they're I eating... sound like my mother. <laughs> <laughs> While they're eating, can I be teaching them the knife tricks that Jackal taught me? Just as entertainment? <laughs> Sure, uh, roll me a performance check. Let's let's see how well you do it first. Alright. <laughs> Nothing to worry about here. Fourteen. Fourteen's really good for you. Like, super uh -huh. good. Yeah, uh, like, you amaze the half-elf, and the Air Genasi Barb kind of is... looks at you, she nods, and, uh... She starts giving you some pointers, like she knows how to do this. I'm going to take those pointers and then <laughs> translate them over to the elf and the genasi. And be like, no, you just gotta, you gotta tuck your finger under here and then it flips right up. Uh, you're trying to teach them. They probably have no idea, like, what you're actually saying, but they, they are looking at your hands and there's, uh, like moment of understanding at least behind that half elf and she jots something down on the piece of paper okay tabby tabby can you read this sure what is it uh it basically says the lizard man is doing a good trick she likes your trick you do good pats flea on the back <laughs> i blush again I... and i keep trying to teach her the half elf kind of like gives you a like quite applause. Like Philalel is also in there. She's like she looks a little bit more relaxed and she's watching, and uh, she's looking down at the piece of paper and looking at Tabby after hearing like her uh, like what you decided her well what you translated her name to be since it's direct translation and. Uh, you know, it's just a nice moment as everyone's waiting for food and then eating. Um, while they're doing that, I want to pull Krakatur and Tabby aside. Okie dokie. As soon as everyone is fed and cleaned up and everything, we need to take them somewhere safe and they can't stay here tonight. I agree, especially if uh, that slaver has friends who are in the cult. They'll come looking for them. Yes, and you know, that slaver might have put a spell on them as well. So he could be tracking them right now. You bring up a good point. Mm. I mean, we murdered him. Oh, I'm in the other room. Oh, we do, did you uh, uh, did, did you have problems with the slaver? What uh, happened? No. Uh, Flea, as I said, Flea did an excellent job of making sure he could not move. We got him to give us information and... Uh, I wish I made him suffer a little more, but uh, I took his head clean off. Oh, okay, he's dead then. We don't, we don't worry about him no more. Oh, and but we you burned, know... We burned his place to the ground. <laughs> that might be worth mentioning. You know, oh. we could sneak into his place, not his, not his house, but his marketplace now and uh, take his stuff. We're building an MO. I'm not sure I approve. I mean... He was a dishonorable man. What is to become of his possessions? He's a dead man, and, uh, well, we can always use his stuff. Aye, and we can use them to take down the rest of this Slaver's Guild slash cult. I like the reasoning behind these things. And we I should... I'm more ambiguous. I can get behind that. Taz, you've lived in this city for a while. Do you know an expert on demonology, perhaps? 
do I know an expert on demonology? Um, you Hold can... on, check your index cards. Demonology, <laughs> demonology. Uh, you can either roll me a uh, religion, an arcana, or a history to see if you've met anyone within that. Like, depending on what you what you roll, will terrible change... at all of these. Change the proof. Oh, that was. Yeah, oh, hey. I'll take the eighteen. Anyways, that's yep. pretty darn good. Okay, um, yeah, you've met uh, a person who actually had you read some poems before that happened to be an expert in, like, at least demons or devils or something like that. I mean, uh, what do you remember of this person? Um, they were kind of eccentric they owned uh actually a, a bookshop um not terribly far away um and they were having an event for the new release of a book and i read for them to drum up some publicity nice you no know, those girls went up but they never came down perhaps they went into the demon zone um they were uh, crack turn, it's magic. really solemn. They were meant for ritualistic purposes. And not the oh. kind that brings good juju. Yes, yeah, right. so we definitely need to get them somewhere safe. I agree. And it's such a shame, you know, seeing what kind of twisted men can do this to these poor ladies. Mm. But yes, to answer your question, Krakato, I do know someone who could help. We should consult him after the tournament. I agree. And so it, the night kind of goes on a little bit. Uh, everyone's fed. Everyone's entertained by Flea because Flea's the best scaly boy. And uh, so do you get everyone and start heading to the uh, Lilac Road? Yeah, I think we're ready. Yeah, yep. I think so. Do we will all want to go as one tribe, or do we want to split the party? Or How I don't see any it? reason to split the party. How late is it, Paul? Um, right now it's it's uh pretty it's it's early evening. It's not like well, no, it's it's probably a little bit later than that. It's like it's it's time for most people to go to bed, but for the entertainment district, oh. everything is just like starting up. So, so the market area is closed? The market area is completely closed. Most of the merchant district is uh, pretty closed. And the mercenary district, uh, if you wait any longer, they're they're probably going to close the gates between uh, that district and everyone else. Okay, never mind. I will follow the party. Okay. No, but we wanted to pick up his... Whoa. Oh, do you want we'll to... Get it tomorrow. Since it's the market, do you want to... Uh... It, and then a couple of us go to the market and a couple of us go to Lilac? No, we should all go to Lilac. We can't afford not having full numbers should we be ambushed. Ambushed by what? The slaver's friends. Slavers. I mean, Krakato was right. He could be watching them or have a tracker or something. Do we have any detect magic in here? And yeah, I can't. I can't remember if we detected magic on them last time. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Yes. Um, I can detect magic. Okay. Uh, so you start performing the ritual. It's about ten minutes. Uh, to get there, and uh, you detect magic, and oh, hold on, I might have been lying to you. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. I have dispel magic, not detect magic. Oh. Well, well, use that. Yeah, you could use I that. I don't want to waste it if I don't okay. know if they have magic on them. Well, yeah, don't waste it. Spell slots. You're you're lucky that there's an, another magic user who is here. I don't have it. Barb. Barb. Yep. And uh, so you ask her to do detect magic. Yeah, I'll ask her. Okay. Uh, she nods and starts performing the ritual. It takes about ten minutes. Uh, she kind of does this in a weird way, and like when she starts using magic, 
like there seems to be a like light fog um dancing around her feet as this happens uh and the fog is thick it's dark and it seems to be making like little weird um patterns of like animals like just running around her feet and uh when she is done with the ritual um she just kind of stands there and goes to every wo woman in there and just pats them on the side of the head calmly and she looks and she kind of looks at tabby for a moment and kind of gives an odd expression and then uh says there we're okay it seems like we don't have any anything that will uh track us uh i think they were expecting our chains never to be broken well that was overconfident of the bastards but helpful we should go it's getting late yep i agree let's get heading out and uh before you guys all head out, uh, she, she takes Tabby aside and says, are, are you okay? I think I'm okay. Am I not okay? You've been cursed recently. Oh, well, that explains everything. <laughs> I should be okay. I think the curse is gone. Just, just be careful. Well, what do you see? I have a, I have the cursed object in the bag. She nods. She kind of like, like puckers her lips like she's about to say something, but she just, she just nods. No, no. You have something on your mind, young, young friend. I need to know more information. If I have been cursed, I need to know these things because I need to get the curse off me. I, I don't exactly know what kind of curse it is, but. Once you're affected by it, it might tempt you again. Whatever hmm. it was. Very interesting. Well, they also have the, the hex blade, of course, and that's kind of a curse in its own in some ways. Hmm. Not that, I guess. I mean, some people could say it's a curse, but not really. I mean, it's all in how you look at it, I suppose. She nods. All right, you guys start roaming the streets with these three women dressed in basically rags, and uh, you go to the... I would have given them close. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Barb is totally not, like, anything your size, so everything kind of fits a little bit small on her. Uh, Flalalal is a skinnier... Well, like, she doesn't have the curves that probably Taz would have, so everything's a little bit too baggy. Uh, but everything kind of, like, fits the other two okay. Uh, Krakator, I have my old robes if you need something to wear. They're gonna be huge on them, obviously. Yeah, um... You know, Barb takes up the offer. She's like, sure. Thank you for listening to Tales of Swordfall. Please consider listening to these podcasts. Welcome to a special episode of Where the Wild Things Roll. My name is John and I will be your host and DM for this 5th edition actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast set in the world of Ravarna. This podcast might be a tad different from others you've listened to. The two players will be my 12 year old son Kinnick and my 10 year old daughter Kaylee as they learn to play D&D through their very first campaign. 
We will pick up with our adventurers as they finish their time at Paduk's Adventurers Guild as they take their practical exams in Dungeoneering, Magical Beasts, Weapons and Armor, Puzzle Solving, Diplomacy, History of the World, and Magical Cause and Effect before they are set out into the world. Can our two adventurers pass their classes and become full-fledged members of the Adventurers Guild? You'll have to tune in and find out next time on Where the Wild Things Roll. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe.